Fractions are just decimal numbers. Uh, they're just written in a different form, but we can convert between fractions and decimals. So we're going to convert these numbers into um, the simplified fraction or mixed number if that's required. Mixed numbers will work for numbers like, like this one that's over one, but these cannot be written as mixed numbers since there is no whole part in their numbers. Okay. So for this first one, this is the algorithm. We're going to take the decimal point and we're going to count how many spaces it needs to move until it's just to the right of the last number. Here we have six. I'm going to move it one place. So it's just to the right of six. And we're going to have six and we're going to divide it by one with that many places that it moved of zeros. So we moved one place. We're going to have one zero. This of course is the fraction. And we're going to reduce this. We can divide top and bottom by two, and that's going to give us three fifths. So that is the simplified fraction form of 0 0.6. Now 1.15, same process. We're going to take the decimal point and count how many places till the very right. We're going to go one, two places. So I'm going to have 115. There's going to be no decimal in uh, shown in the the, the, the numerator because we move the decimal point all the way to the to the right, which makes it a whole number. But we can only do that as long as we divide it by the, the proper, uh, it's going to be a power of 10, actually. In this case, we move it two spaces, so we're going to have 10 squared. Um, 10 squared is going to be um, 100. So two zeros, two places is moved. That's how that works. This can be reduced. We can divide top and bottom by 5. Um, and so that's going to give us 23 over 20. And this can be rewritten as a um, mixed number. 20 can go to 23 once with 3 left over. So 1 and 3 twentieths is our answer there. Okay, same process. We're going to move 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces all the way to the very right. Five, six, four is the number. These beginning zeros don't really matter, right? Zero, zero, five, six, four is the same thing as five, six, four when there's no decimal point written. Um, so this is going to be over, let's see, we did four spaces. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. And I can reduce this number. I can reduce it by, let's see, two for sure. Let's see if there's anything else. I'm going to pull up a calculator here and just uh, make sure I'm doing it correctly. 564 divided by 2 is 282 over 5,000. I can divide by 2 again. I get 141 over 2,500. And I'm not going to be able to reduce it anymore. 2,500 can only be divided by 5 uh, and 2 for prime numbers. 141 cannot be divided by either of those, so that's simplified. Okay, a 1, 2. So we're going to have 5 over 1, 2. This is the same thing as 1 20th when we reduce. That's the process that you can go through. It's quite fast once you know the, um, the algorithm. So 1, 2, we're going to go 1, 3, 4 over 100. Divide top and bottom by 2. Um, it's going to give us... 67 over 50. Uh, looks that twice gives us 14, 120, yeah. And then we can say 50 can go into 67 once with 17 50ths remaining. Okay, one, two, three spaces. So this is going to be the same thing as 2006 over one, two, three zeros. I can divide by. Um, well, this one here, right, 1,000 can go into 2,006 two times with six 1,000s left over. And then I can also reduce the six 1,000s to three over 500. And so that one would actually end up being easier to change it to mixed number first and then reduce the fraction. Um, either way, you're going to do it. We'll give you the same number. Um, but if you just keep keep your head in the game, keep thinking about the numbers and which way it works out easiest for you to reduce it. This one I can move one, two, three spaces. That's going to be 125 over one, two, three zeros. And I can divide top and bottom by 125 
If I do that, I'm going to get one eighth. And finally, we're going to move it one space over. That's going to be 12 over one zero. Giving us six fifths, which of course is one and one fifth, changing it into a mixed number. So converting a decimal to a fraction, you just use this simple algorithm, count how many spaces is going to move, and then give it, you know, with a one and then that many zeros at that, that many, that many places that you move spaces. Um, and then reduce the fraction or change it to a mixed number and reduce the fraction. Um, so that's converting from decimals to fractions. If we want to go the other way, well, this way is even easier because all we have to do for this is do the division. And in here, we're going to round to the nearest hundredths place if necessary, and some of these will require that. So to show this, I'm going to actually show a calculator here. Um, I'm going to actually do the calculator um, for these things and look at them. So um, let's go ahead and plug these numbers into a calculator. I'm going to start with this first row. And as we see here, we have 3 fourths is the same thing as 0 0.75. I'm just plugging it into a calculator and solving for the decimal. That's what we get. 52 over 10 is the same thing as 5.2. One third is the same thing as 0 0.3333, and three actually repeats indefinitely. All right, so here we had 0 0.75. That's already to the hundredth place, so that one's good. This one is actually the same thing as 5.2, and we can see that because um, 52 over 10, right, we can make it into a mixed number. It's going to be 5 and 2 tenths. Well, 5 and 2 tenths, if you, if you make this into, a, into a, a decimal, 2 tenths is the same thing as 0 0.2, and that's what gives us the 5.2. So it's just a different way of thinking about the number. Of course, just plug it into a calculator, and you'll get 5.2. And this one was 0 0.3 repeating, and round to the nearest hundredths place is going to be 0 0.33. Okay, well, let's look at the next three. All right, and here I have the next three. This is 10 and 3 sevenths. It's the same thing as, um, you know, 10 and 3 sevenths as the mixed number. That, this is what a mixed number notation means, right? 10 plus 3 sevenths. And we can see here we get 10.43 as the decimal number rounded to the nearest hundredth place. One and a half is one plus one half, which is going to give us 1.5. 22 over three, if you put that in a calculator, you get 7.33 repeating. So 7.33 is going to be our solution. Okay, and there we go. We have these these parts um, all written correctly and then rounded to the um, nearest hundredth spot. Okay, last three. Let's plug these in and see what we get. We have 105 over 23. It's going to be 1.47 uh, rounded to the nearest hundredth spot. 25 over 100 is 0 0.25 which you can think of this like a quarter of a dollar, right? Is 25 cents. That's the idea there. Or this is the same thing as one fourth, right? You can divide top and bottom by 25 and you get one fourth. So you're gonna get the same thing as 0 0.25. And three over seven is 0 0.43 um, again. We actually already saw this zero point, um, this uh, three over seven, right? 10 plus three sevenths was 10.42857143. Just three sevens give us the 0 0.428571, um, you know, and it continues indefinitely. This is our uh, last three. Let, them, let me get them written in. Uh, converting from fraction to a decimal, um, all we have to do is do the division. In other words, plug it into a calculator and solve. Now let's look at ordering numbers, uh, decimal numbers, and also fractions. Um, so... When you think about a, a regular number, right, as you go further and further to the left, the place value gets larger and larger. And so you have larger and larger numbers. Well, the same kind of thing happens here. Uh, as we have the the largest number here, right, all of these numbers have zero for ones place, which means we're only going to be considering the decimal part for ordering them. This is the furthest to the... Um, left place value that actually has digits in it, um, besides zero, I should say. And this is also the highest place value. It's going to be the most impactful, the largest place value of these numbers. And so you can see that right here we have this number and this number have uh, a number other than zero in that 
in, in that um, place value, which means we know this one has to be the smallest number because it, do, it doesn't even have a tenth in there. So 0 0.042 is going to be the smallest. Okay, now we can look at the next place value. The next place value is going to be the hundredths. It's going to be 2 and 0 there. Well, the 2 is, is the larger one, and so we know this is going to be smaller than this one since it has a 2 there and a 0 there. So 0 0.402 is the next smallest, and finally the largest is 0 0.420. So that's an order from largest to smallest. Now for this next one, uh, we can see here, same process, right? We have one. I'm going to ignore this one for a second. Look at this one. We have one here. Decimal point, seven, and a seven here. This one has a three, but we can actually add as many places as we want to the right as just, we can just add zeros. The same thing is true as we go to the left, right? 1.7 is the same thing as zero, 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 1.7. You can add as many zeros as you want to the left and to the right. They just mean that there's no, no non-zero digit in those place values. Well, as we can see here, there's a three in the hundredths place, and there's a zero in the, in the hundredths place for this number which means 1.73 is going to be larger than 1.7. Now the question about is, is this one here, 1 and 11 fifteenths. So all we have to do is change that to a decimal number, and that can be easily done by just plugging into a calculator. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that, 11 over 15, and that gives me, so 1 and 11 fifteenths is going to be 7333. Three, three and the threes just keep repeating indefinitely. So what we can see here is that we have uh, a three in the, um, this is gonna be tenths, hundredths, thousandths, also three in the ten thousandths, and this one has a zero in the thousandths, a zero in the ten thousandths. So this number is larger than this one, and this one's larger than this one. One and 11 fifteenths, 1.73, and 1.7. This is part of the re probably the reason why we use fractions and decimals is because fractions, this is exactly equal to this, but this one requires infinitely many numbers written, which we can't do. So 1 and 11 fifteenths is the exact form, and it's more, more compact in that, in that manner. We don't have to round when we're talking about this number. We can use the fraction to show that. All right, for the next one, if you plug this into a calculator, um, one half is going to be 0 0.5, one third is 0 0.3 repeating, just 3, 3, 3 indefinitely, and one fourth is 0 0.25. This one's quite easy to uh, order because the tenths spot tells us all we need to know. Uh, one half, I'll do it in the fractions, one half is larger than one third, which is larger than one fourth this is the correct order that was already given to us. Okay, finally, this one here is an interesting one because we have uh, the numerator is one less than the denominator, six sevenths, seven eighths, and five sixths. So these are all close to one, right? If it was seven sevenths, it'd be equal to one, eight eighths equal to one, um, six sixths equal to one. But it's, it's just slightly off that. It's just gonna be slightly less than one. But the question is, which one is the closest to one? Which one's actually the highest number? Because they're, they're, they're not going to be greater than one. But which one is closest? And that's going to be the largest. The next largest is going to be the next closest. And so on. Of course, you can just use a calculator for these. 6 over 7 gives us um, 0 0.85. I'll do 7, 1. And then it keeps going. 7 eighths is going to be... Uh, 0 0.875, it just ends there, and 5 sixths is going to be 0 0.833 repeating, which keeps repeating threes. So we do have an 8 in the tenth spot, but the hundredth spot is different. We have a 5 here, a 7 here, and a 3 here. So we know 7 eighths is the largest, 6 sevenths is the next largest, and five sixths is the smallest. And what's interesting here is that the largest denominator, because of how, how this um, problem was set up, 
the largest denominator was first because it had the largest numerator. And in fact, if if you wanted to find a number that was even bigger than this, but but not quite one yet, I could find something like 10, 10 over nine. This would be larger than seven eighths. And uh, 11 over 12 would be larger than nine tenths. And it, you keep going, you can keep going, let's say like 100 over 101. This would be very close to one. 